Hey everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max. If you follow the EV world at all lately, you've probably heard of the frustrations people are having with public charging their electric cars, uh, namely basically cars that aren't Tesla and that are on publicly available networks like EVgo, Electrify America, ChargePoint, and countless other state and town run chargers. Well, there's been some exciting news in this arena. Uh, that as part of the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Project, uh, which is a federal program, uh, there's a new subset of that money that's gonna go to fixing chargers already in place. So to recap quickly, $5 billion has already been announced as part of NEVI to help basically build this uh, new network that's gonna be reliable and help charge electric cars from all manufacturers publicly available across major highway corridors. But, of course, we already have plenty of chargers like this unit behind me that haven't worked uh, for months on end. In the case of this unit, it's been, uh, yeah, over a year since the last successful check-in I could find on PlugShare. So, uh, with that in mind, this is urgently needed money, but it's complicated about who it applies to and whether or not we'll actually see outcomes from it. So, keep watching this video because if you want to help change things, I have a call to action that you can do as part of this news, and I want to explain briefly how this is all working, uh, how money is gonna go theoretically to fix these existing chargers and uh, how we can hopefully achieve a good outcome from this. So here's the situation. A hundred million dollars of that total $5 billion fund has been dedicated towards fixing existing chargers or it's a repair or replace program. Hopefully repair because replacing, especially in the case of DC fast charging hardware, is very expensive. Now, interestingly, this is only applicable or the only people who can apply are state you know, level government, so like the Department of Transportation for your state, or local municipalities and towns. This doesn't mean, however, as far as I'm aware, reading the language of the document, and uh, you're welcome, I went through a bunch of bureaucratic language in that document uh, for this video, but as far as I'm aware, privately you know, run chargers like this EVgo are fully eligible because they are publicly accessible. So as long as the charger is publicly accessible, it's in the Department of Energy's alternative fuel uh, station locator, which is an interesting tool. I'll link in uh, this video, by the way. As long as it's there and it is the state or the government, the town government who applies and not EVgo or Electrify America, then it's fine. The idea being, I guess, this is going to preserve accountability because your state or your town is going to be the one who is, is responsible for allocating the money, getting the repair done, of course, with the permission of whoever happens to own that site, like in the case of this site, it being private. So, I totally understand where this money, where this bill is coming from, and I think money does need to be spent here as a band-aid. And without getting on a platform here, if I can just express some concerns I have, well, there's no guarantee that this is gonna result in working chargers. There is a stipulation that within 12 months, the money has to be spent, the work has to be done, assuming, you know, hopefully getting that station online and in compliance with NEVI as a whole, which has a whole bunch of uh, qualifications I won't get into here, but basically meaning you take a broken uh, either fast charging or level two site and you make it work. So that's the idea here, but the accountability, I think, is gonna be up to, well, the public and of course the governments themselves. So what you can do right now is, because the applications are open, tell your town government or your state government, your DOT for Virginia, Colorado, whomever it may be as they apply, uh, about these broken chargers. Maybe they already know, maybe they've already sent an application, but make sure that they do send an application in to fix these chargers. Uh, and by making your voice heard, hopefully we can address the chargers like this, like this one here is in a shopping center that's used, uh, but it hasn't been working for a year. And it's, I think it's unfortunate, frankly, that federal money is what it takes to get something done on this because you'd hope that EVgo for their brand, and I'm just using this in this specific example, of course, all of these public stations, all of these public networks we've seen have issues, but you would hope for their brand that they would have fixed this unit within, you know, if not days or weeks, months. But the fact that it's been offline for a year is just, in my opinion, 
really sad. And hopefully this money is the kick in the pants to say, hey, here's some money. You don't have to spend it out of your own pocket um, to get this fixed. Now, there is also another measure of accountability. The, it's 80% of the funding. So 20% of the funding does have to come from the station operator, which I think uh, is going to hopefully keep these costs from ballooning too much. So there's some basic measures of accountability in place. There's no strict uptime requirements. That's left to NEVI, which is going to be uh, basically uh, for the purpose of that station being compliant once it's operational. But our starting point here is broken chargers that we have to get working in the first place. So please, please, please reach out to your local government about stations you know of that are broken, have bro broken for a while, that people need to use, that are publicly available, and let them know to apply for this program by November 13th because that's the deadline. Now I'm gonna turn it over here to my uh, colleague and friend, Ryan, who um, actually manages Rate Your Charge at a spec, which is something we've done for the last several months to explicitly also do our part to address all of the issues of public charging. So Ryan, what are your thoughts on this news? Certainly, uh, I've been having my ear to the ground with public charging and the unfortunate reality is that the user experience is subpar. There's just a lot of broken chargers, slow chargers, inaccurate apps, a lot of these problems, and a lot of these problems are just from hardware not being fixed. Uh, and, you know, I think there's, there's a lot to be said as to whether or not you approve or disapprove of this kind of funding. But the reality is this money has been allocated and it's going to be used to repair these types of stations. And with that in mind, I think the most important thing is for us to try to help improve accountability and make sure that that money is being spent appropriately and that we're seeing actual results, improving charging experiences uh, for the investment that we've made. Absolutely. And timeline wise, we're looking at, you know, November 13th deadline for these applications within then right after 12 months, the work has to be done. So November of 2024, Hopefully, these sites that are being repaired are working, but it's going to be up to us to make sure that's the case. And if all of this money has been spent and we still have a lot of broken chargers that were broken in the first place and applied and got money and are still not working, well, that's going to be an embarrassment and we need to be public and broadcast that. So I don't mean to sound too pessimistic here, but with what Ryan said, the current state of public charging has just been, frankly, been such a poor user experience. I'm glad anything is being done. And I'm glad that the federal government realizes that this is a way that they can potentially help. Now, $100 million sounds like a lot of money, but by their own account, there's 6,000 publicly available D, uh, fast chargers and level two stations, but 6,000 charging stations nationwide that are temporarily unavailable, like the case of this one that's been offline for months. Many of them have been offline for quite a while. 6,000. That's 4% of all the chargers in the country. And uh, that's, you know, that number might not, frankly, even be entirely accurate. They measure it by ports, but there may be a lot of chargers that are working but and technically up, but aren't providing an ideal user experience. We've seen all kinds of in-betweens. Ryan, I'm sure, could speak to that from what he's seen at Rate Your Charge, with people not getting the charge speed they're supposed to on their vehicle, all kinds of issues. Like with this station specifically, like, right, it's going to need a new cable and handle. Right now, this is just workout equipment. Uh, and whatever, you know, software or back-end issue is going on here. So that, you know, those kind of company-level things, that's up to companies like EVgo and Electrify America to figure out. But at a site level, the hardware not working, it being broken. Hopefully this is that kind of much needed accelerator to get everything working. So hopefully this has been a somewhat, you know, neutral just explanation of what's going on for you guys. I'm curious though, what do you think about accountability being kept in this process? Um, is there a specific story you have about a station like this that's just been offline for a while that you're hoping to see fixed with this news? Do you think this is addressing the issue where it needs to be? Um, because, you know, Frankly, I think this is good that it's happening, but there's so many unknowns now, and it's really up to us to uh, take this money and these uh, goals and help make them reality. I'm optimistic that with the competition from Tesla, that will be a kick in the pants for a lot of operators to really get stuff into gear, get better charging experiences. Um, but again, like we've been saying, the accountability is something that uh, may may be an issue, and we're not 100% certain 
how that's going to play out. So I think it's yeah. really important for us, people who are aware, on the ground, able to look at these stations to try and help improve our community and improve these charging experiences because us and our neighbors are going to be the ones that are, are using them. Absolutely. So many thanks to those of you who have been submitting updates on Rate Your Charge. Please continue to do so. But now here's an opportunity for you to do a similar kind of initiative, but also get someone to spend money towards fixing these chargers. It's very exciting stuff, but do reach out to your local government, find the chargers that aren't working. And I will yet, yeah, on Ryan's point, give another kudos. I mean, to Tesla for having a working network that is, of course, opening up in many ways. It's still not publicly accessible, right? It's dependent on partnerships that haven't been made with every automaker, and there's unknowns in that process. We've actually made a video on this channel just about that. Uh, I know many of you are excited about Tesla and Tesla superchargers, and that's great, but we can't just have one player in this market. We need competition because it's going to keep the whole uh, you know, marketplace for consumers better for charging. We just need more. There's not enough chargers as is. Nevi's hoping to change that. But let's start at a minimum by fixing so many of these broken ones we already have. I've been Max, and uh, Ryan has been, of course, behind the camera and chiming in here. Uh, and this has been Out of Spec Guide. Please let us know what other kind of topics of charging and EV ownership you want us to cover. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.